So um, I'm really happy to be here in support of the Teaching Truth Initiative. Um, I am utterly outraged by the attacks on uh, efforts to teach about uh, the history of racism in the United States uh, that are taking place in state after state. Uh, and ironically, this comes at a time when there is more and more new research coming out which uh, expose the depth um, and complexity of white supremacy in American history. Now, uh, calling uh, the presentation of evidence about racism in U.S. history, calling this critical race theory is outrageous. Uh, because what there's a big difference between theory, which is trying to make um, uh, information fit in a paradigm, and historical research, which is there to complicate a historical narrative. Anybody who is trying to uh, remake American history so that nothing threatening and upsetting enters our classroom is doing a disservice to our children, doing a disservice to our country. And uh, so I think it's incredibly important that we in our universities support our elementary school teachers, our high school teachers, our librarians in their efforts to make sure that all the new information about race in U.S. history uh, is not banned, uh, not banned from our libraries, not banned from our classrooms. And that means that we at universities have to be incredibly vigilant about what we do in our own classrooms. Um, so. You know, I want to say not only do we have to defend teaching truth at universities, we have to defend speaking truth because sometimes teachers don't have all the information they need regarding the complexities of race and their students need to correct the teachers. This is something that goes on in my own classes um, and I want to make sure that the a uh, classroom is a place which is open to information that is challenging. Uh, I'll give you an example of this. Um, two years ago, I'm using a, a wonderful uh, Bronx memoir called Bronx Primitive, which focuses on Jewish and Italian immigration experiences in the Bronx in the 1920s. Um, my students say to me, Dr. Nason, I know you are committed to teaching about racism, but there is an undercurrent of anti-blackness in this book. And they mentioned two small passages where uh, pejorative comments are made about uh, black people who are in the neighborhoods this young woman is describing. Um, I hear them and say, you know, you're right. Uh, and I'm going to have to teach this book differently than I had intended to. Um, this is the kind of thing that we as teachers have to be open to. We, you know, we have to be honest, uh, not only with the material that we know about, but we have to be open to our own students sharing their experiences, which may complicate what we present. Um, the dealing with race in American history is a process. It's not a fixed series of predictable steps. Um, so the striving for truth is much more important than the striving for safety. Safety is not a goal um, that allows us to constantly learn new things. So what I'm here to say is let's, as teachers at the university level, stand up for an open classroom where new research is welcomed, student input is welcomed, and no legislature is going to tell us what we can and can't teach. And when we do that at the university level, 
we then ally with our uh, sisters and brothers in, um, in K through 12 education and fight for them to have the same rights that we do. And also work with librarians to make sure that books are not banned, uh, books are not removed from shelves. Books are not, um, you know, uh, prevented from internet uh, uh, bibliographies that our students have access to. And insofar as there are places where bans are in effect, we need to organize freedom schools where the fullest discussion of race in U.S. history is taking place and where the research that we do is continually incorporated into what we teach. Mm -hmm.